Anyone who owns a crabapple tree knows how beautiful they are covered with blossoms in the spring. But as the leaves turn yellow in the fall, your eyes are drawn to the lush red glow of the apples. Have you ever thought of making wine from them? Harvesting of crab apples is pretty straightforward. You just need a ladder, a bucket, and a pair of scissors. Chances are some leaves and twigs will also fall into the bucket. Don't be too concerned, as there will be lots of time to remove them later. I have used between 6 and 12 pounds of apples for a 3.5 gallon brew. This bunch is a little heavy, but will go down as I remove the bad ones. Toss out any apples that have mold on them. Make sure to give the little critters time to escape. I then rinse the apples with a garden hose. This brings to the surface most of the leaves and twigs, so they are a lot easier to remove. In a laundry tub, let the water overflow the bucket and skim the top for the remaining debris. Next, I use a sterile axe handle to start breaking the apples down. This is the most labor-intensive part as it might take half an hour to crush them sufficiently. At this point, you can add grapes or raisins. Here I use Concord grapes, but sometimes I just use whatever grapes are on sale. This helps to give the wine a little body. You don't have to completely crush the apples, just make sure they're scored. Some even freeze the apples first to open them up. After crushing, tie a nylon mesh straining bag to a sterile bucket and pour the apples into the bag. Using that same rope, tie the bag closed. Make sure you use enough rope so that it can be hung, as this will float in the must. Add good clean water, enough to start the bag floating. For three and a half gallons, add four Campton tablets to sterilize. I have tried letting the apples ferment in their own natural yeast, but the results were unpredictable. Next cover with a cloth. The next day, add a little pectic enzyme to the must. Make sure you stir well. After the enzyme has had a few hours to dissolve, you can then add the sugar. How much sugar to add depends on how sweet your crab apples are. Mine are not, so I add lots of sugar. I add about 14 cups of common table sugar to the water and it's starting to boil. But do make sure how much water you have in the bucket before you mix the remaining liquid sugar. After it's allowed to cool a little, add the sugar water to the must and give it a little stir. If using a hydrometer, expect a specific gravity of about 1.100. Also add a little yeast nutrient to the must and make sure it's well dissolved. As for yeast, I use a champagne yeast. However, any standard white wine yeast will also work well. I warm up a small dish of must to 110 Fahrenheit and then add the yeast. After a few minutes, it's ready to go in the must. Within a few hours, you will see the yeast reacting feverishly, foaming and sizzling and fermenting away. 
I love the sound of those little yeasties at work. After about five days, the fermentation should ease off and the specific gravity will drop to 1.000. You can then remove the bag of crab apples and let it drain. I use a camera tripod, but a ladder works just as good. Finally, you get to rack the wine from the bucket to the carboy. Once filled, add the bung in the airlock. I use a twin bubbler with sterile water to the correct level. Soon it'll be bubbling like crazy again, but eventually it will subside. After about two weeks, the bubbles slow down and the wine starts to darken. You can rack the wine again when enough of the lees drop to the bottom. You probably have to do this in another couple of months, but it'll take six to nine months before the wine is ready to bottle. So the question everybody's going to ask is, what does it taste like? Very tart, very dry, kind of sucks all the moisture out of your mouth. I consider it more of a tonic than a wine. It's very high in alcohol content. A little nip before bed, you'll sleep like a baby. It's unique, it's distinct. Ah. Uh.